We do not have too much to do today. It's gonna to be easy. Uh, we have a warm-up class survey to begin with. We're gonna take 10 minutes to do this. Uh, you're just explaining what did you like? What did you not like? How could we improve the class? Okay, so it is 132 now. You will have, let's say, to 145 to work on this. All right. Anybody has questions, problems, issues? You can reach out to me in the chat. We can make breakout rooms and talk about stuff or get points. Get me anything you haven't submitted, particularly anything that's assessment points. U9L5 is important. Your voc chapter 10 vocab quiz. Those are two assessment point things. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing and do my work. Richard. Hi, Richard. Let me show you. We're just working on part one, which is the warm up class serve. Look, there's David. Hi, David. We're just doing the warm up class survey. You have till 45 to work on it. Hi, Winston. We're working on the warm up class survey, top of the module. You've got about 10 minutes to work on it. We'll stop at 145.
if I'm not getting responses in the chat, Ken and Richard, just make sure to get me your U9L5. I'm missing it, and those are assessment points. Anybody who has not done U9L5, please get that in. That okay. Great. No worries. Thank you. Just making sure message received. There's Daphne. Daphne, we are working on this warm up. Uh, oh, hang on. Class survey. You got about seven minutes to work on it. It's just, you know, any ideas you have about how to make the class better, or whatever. Just the warm up class survey right here. <laughs> Slowly dying.
Okay, we are done. I am messing around in the chat. Uh, <clears throat> the next thing I am doing is kind of fun and it is based on the idea that sadly teachers have to take classes too. I'm taking a graduate class that's looking at how to improve reading, writing, and mathematics in the CTE classroom. Typically, most people or traditionally, your literacy should be developed in middle school, that you should come to high school fully literate. That means that you can read and understand everything. A bizarre thing that I learned is the idea that just being able to decipher the symbols of the letters of a word and associate it appropriately with the phonics and be able to pronounce it. If you do not have any understanding of that word, there's nothing that you can associate with the words. The words need experience on your part to have association to be able to think about them. It's what I call reading without comprehension, right? You are, you can read the word, you understand how to pronounce it, but it has no meaning for you. You have no meaning in your head to attach to that word, okay? So real reading, being literate is being able to read those words and pronounce them in your mind or out loud and associate a meaning to them, all right? So what I'm gonna be doing right now is talking about what it takes to be an active reader. I really thought that this was one of the best summations I've ever seen. And so I really feel that just reading it to you could help us all become better readers, okay? Good readers are active readers. From the outset, they have clear goals in mind for their reading. They constantly evaluate whether the text and their reading of it is meeting their goals. Good readers typically look over the text before they read, noting such things as structure of the text, text sections, that might be most relevant to their reading goals. As they read, good readers frequently make predictions about what is to come. Like you're reading a mystery or something. Ooh, did the butler do it? Is that gonna help me figure it out? What about that secretary? I think she looks shifty. You think thoughts about your reading. They read selectively continually making decisions about their reading. What to read carefully, what to read quickly, what not to read, what to reread and so on. Good readers construct, revise and question the meanings and interpretations they make as they read. They draw upon, compare and integrate their prior knowledge with material in the text. Okay, so what this is talking about is that you are making choices about your reading. You're trying to look out ahead and say, what in this passage is important? What isn't? What do I need to read carefully? What can I skim? When I was your age in high school, I just read. I was a very bad reader. I was a slightly dyslexic, slow reader. I read one word at a time and I read every word of my assignment. I didn't give any weight to anything like this is more important, this is less important. I couldn't really differentiate that. I just read my assignments. The strategies we're talking about in this article are going to help you be a better, more critical reader, okay? You don't wanna just capture one word at a time. The idea is that your eyes can actually capture two, maybe three words at a time. For my father, 
My father was actually in the OSS and the CIA. They did a lot of work with speed reading to try and get them capturing five to six words at a time. They had special machines that would watch your eyeballs as you read. So the idea is when you read something, ideally you're capturing maybe two or three words at a time in your scan. You're going kadink, kadink, kadink. Me, I captured one. I read one word, one word, one word, as opposed to two, 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 two. You can see how that gets quicker. If you can capture three, you're doing really well. For these guys, they wanted you to be able to capture five to six words. Okay. Now, why was that? That's how wide a news column is. If you look, a news column is typically five to six words wide. So once they had their eyes trained to be able to capture five words at a time, when they read the paper, they are not looking left and right. They are just going down the column. Their eyes can capture that whole line of text and read it in one glance. Reading is a technology. Humans, Homo sapiens, were not evolved to read. We were evolved to communicate. Our brains, our eyes, our ears, are all designed through eons of uh, you know, selection to help us communicate. Reading is a technology that we invented. It is nothing that you are prepared to do genetically. You need to learn reading. This is why there is something speed reading. I've asked a couple students, um, and nobody seems to have speed reading in their curriculum anymore. This is the idea of things like reading with your finger under the words and you're moving your finger, or you take a sheet of paper and you're coming down the page and it's forcing your eyes to read faster. I was able to improve my reading four to 500% with speed reading. It settles back to about two to 300, but it made me significantly faster. Something else to know, you would think with speed reading, you would lose comprehension, right? You're going too fast. You're not gonna understand what you're reading. Your comprehension actually increases with speed reading. And ask me why, it's something about the concepts are better interrelated because you're getting them all faster. All right, active readers read selectively, continually making decisions about their reading, what to read carefully, what to read quickly, what not to read, what to reread and so on. Good readers construct, revise and question the meanings and interpretations they make as they read. They draw upon, compare and integrate that prior knowledge with the material in the text. They think about the author of the text, their style, their beliefs, their intentions, their historical milieu, and so on. They monitor their understanding of the text, making adjustments in reading as necessary. You need to understand who is writing your book. What is their perspective? What are they trying to prove? Are they trying to convince you of something? You know, if it's Philip Morris writing about the benefits of cigarette smoking, you might question what they are trying to tell you because they are trying to protect themselves. They are a cigarette manufacturer, all right? Good readers try to determine the meaning of unfamiliar words and concepts in the text and deal with inconsistencies or gaps as needed. They evaluate the text quality and value and react to the text in a range of ways, both intellectual and emotional. Reading is a very bizarre confluence. One of my favorite things we talk about is 
uh, I only have one person in class. Do you hear a voice in your head when you read? Do you hear a voice? I hear a voice. In theory, 90% of people hear a voice in their head when they read. Who is that voice? I, you know, they say it is your voice that you hear. In my mind, there's a little more nuance to that. It is your conscience. It is that little Jiminy Cricket in your head that tells you, hey, maybe doing that, not such a good idea. It's you, it's, it's your, I call it your conscious voice. When I am awake and I am thinking about something, there is my voice in my head talking to me. If I am asleep and dreaming, that is a different voice. That is not my conscious voice. That is my unconscious voice. Having that voice, it allows, it, it is a very bizarre process where you are interacting with the text and your memories and this voice. When I'm saying good readers question, good readers make predictions, it's not the reader that's making the prediction, it's this little voice in your head that's saying, hey, did the butler do it? I don't know, I kind of think so, but let's see, what about that secretary? Was she hiding behind the door? You are in a dialogue with the material. Good readers, unfamiliar terms and concepts, blah, blah, blah. Good readers read different kind of text differently. For example, when reading a narrative, good readers attend closely to the setting and the characters. Narrative is a story. When reading expository text, this is instructions or explanations. These readers frequently construct and provide summaries of what you have read. They write down the instructions. For good readers, text processing occurs not only during reading as we have traditionally defined it, but also during short breaks taken during reading, even after reading itself has commenced. I often find when I put down a book, I'm thinking about the story. I'm thinking, where's it going? What's it gonna do? I don't know. Comprehension is a consuming and complex activity, but one that for good readers is typically both satisfying and productive. All right, I don't know if that helps you. It really helped me to hear and see all those concepts about being a good reader together. I had never had that explained to me, what an active reader does. So I just thought it might help you. And the idea if you've never tried speed reading and you are a slow reader, see if your parents can find you a speed reading course. It's not long, it's like a day or two. It's amazing how much faster you can read. Reading is a technology. Okay. Uh, I would assume that your letters are anonymous. Somebody's asking me in the chat, do I sign my bottom or do I have to say sincerely my name or can I just say sincerely APCSP student? My assumption is these are anonymous. There is no benefit in my mind to anyone knowing who is writing this letter. You're just giving your advice. I also don't think anyone's gonna come after you for giving them bad advice if you did sign your letter. Okay, so we have a half hour left. Let's look back at where we are, hang on. We've only got one thing left to do. And that is your letter to the next students, which it sounds like Xander's already working on. So down here, well, I think, did we go through the presentation? Yes, we did. But we had our warm up survey. I'm just tap dancing here. Here's our fabulous. 
we've done our warm up. We've done what it means to be an active reader. Note to next year CSP students in Canvas. Now you get to write a letter to future students explaining what you liked or didn't like about the class. And that's it. Uh, if you have any work that needs to get in, let me know. If you want to work with me or like work in a breakout room, I am more than willing. What is due is all your assignments, our goal or objectives that you'll be able to evaluate this past year and advise students who will learn about CSP next year. You will explain to them what they will learn. You will learn some of the skills used by active readers. Complete the letter, check out with me and make sure that you have completed all assignments and enjoy your summer. I, I'll take this moment, since somehow I always get stuck in a breakout room at the end. Um, I just wanted to thank you all for being such a wonderful class, for trying as hard as you have, for making it through this crazy experience together. I really appreciate all the support that you have given me and I have had incredible fun supporting all of you. So just know how much your success means to me. I think you all have very bright futures ahead of you. Stay confident and get your letter done. And I'm sure you'll write me in the chat. Technically, I cannot let you go, but that is a technicality. And we'll leave it at that. So we have until we have a half hour. We have until 2.30. And then I'll let you go for the last time. Well, you're not supposed to run away the moment I wave my hand. I can hear you. All right. Please, yeah. Sweet. I hear you. I don't know, Winston. Someone's asking if the letters are a new thing. This is my first year at MCPS, so. With any luck, you're gonna get letters next year. Do you think you'd listen if they told you something? If everyone gets bored, we can identify genres of music. I'm good at that game.
how did you manage to get out? School internet? I'll tell you.
somehow I left the meeting. Oops. Nine minutes.
four minutes. Hey, something exciting just happened and it's the end of class. Not sure quite why I heard it that way. We are all done. It's not even 2.20 and Lily gets to tell me that it would really go to 2.30. Thank you, Lily, for a great year. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you, Thank you Anyali. Thank you. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Have have Thank day. you. Have a good day. Thank you. Great year. You. I'm going to have a good summer vacation. That's what I'm going to have. You, my friend, have a bright future ahead of you. Have a great summer. Don't we have still class on Wednesday to like say goodbye? I, if you're coming to check in, you do. Okay, I will. 
All right. Have a great day. Bye, team. Eric, can I help you? Kareem? Eric, get me the rest of your uh, written response. Get me anything. I'll give you points. Kareem, you're doing fabulous. I will see you later, gentlemen. I have a meeting to go to. Thank you for a great year. Thank you.